you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs, let us know how you feel about it. He either, you know, got his wrist pain by, by doing over-aggressive high fives to his buddies. <laughs> The literature is very clear that ultrasound guidance makes internal jugular vein catheterization both safer and more efficient. The first step in the procedure is the pre-scan. You must first identify the relevant anatomy and plan the procedure. Here you can see the carotid artery, which you are attempting to avoid, as well as the large internal jugular vein, which will make a great target. Placing the patient in Trendelenburg will increase the size of the vein and make it easier to cannulate. After pre-scanning, you will sterilely prep the patient. You should use whatever central line bundle your hospital has to prevent chances of infection and fully prep and drape the patient. The next step is a preparing the high frequency linear ultrasound probe, which is accomplished by placing ultrasound gel on the probe or in the sterile sheath. The sterile sheath is then applied to the probe carefully and pulled completely over the probe. Rubber bands are then placed around the head of the probe to hold the gel on the end of the transducer. Any bubbles that are seen at the end of the transducer are carefully removed as they may interfere with the ultrasound image. You can then use the sterile gel from the bundle on the outside of the sheath. At this point, we are ready to scan the patient again and identify the best point of entry. With the vein in the center of the probe, the needle is also inserted in the center of the probe, and the tip is visualized immediately upon entry through the skin. This is a short axis demonstration. In this example, you can see the needle tip appear just lateral to the vein. Therefore, insertion is stopped and is redirected to the center of the vein. The probe indicator is on the same side as the probe indicator on the image, the left in this example, so that at all times you know the left from the right during the procedure. This is not the best visualization of the needle tip, but you can see it here pop through the superficial wall of the IJ. Ideally, you would want to see the needle much better and have it show up much brighter and hyperechoic as in this example. The most important mistake to avoid is losing the needle tip and allowing it to get ahead of the probe as shown here. Instead, the ultrasound beam should follow the tip perfectly. One way to do this is with small movements, always keeping the ultrasound just ahead of the needle and stopping the insertion of the needle as soon as you visualize the needle tip. Once visualized, then move the ultrasound probe ahead. This is slightly tedious, but a good way to start when you don't have as much experience. If you are not sure of the location of the needle tip, you may turn the probe 90 degrees as shown here to visualize it better. The entire procedure can be performed in this orientation as well. It can be difficult as the probe, needle, and vessel all must be lined up perfectly. The ultrasound beam is one millimeter thick and this can be technically difficult but many physicians prefer this long axis approach as it is easier to visualize the tip of the needle and you don't have to worry about seeing a posterior portion of the needle when the tip is actually deeper in the patient as could happen with the short axis approach as shown here. In this long axis view you can also easily see the wire sliding into the vein and you know exactly where it is as you insert it through the needle. Both the short and long axis approaches are acceptable. At least one randomized study showed the short axis approach to have higher first pass success rates at 98% versus 78%. The next step is removing the needle over the wire and then making a small nick in the skin with the scalpel to allow the dilator to enter the skin easily. The dilator is then inserted over the wire. Once dilated, the catheter can then easily pass over the wire. You must be careful to control the wire that comes out of the open port and have control of the wire at all times. After the catheter is fully inserted, you can again confirm if you wish by placing the ultrasound on the vein. The catheter can be easily seen in the IJ. Another sonographic means of confirming placement will be to use the phased array probe underneath the drapes to get a subcostal view of the heart. Once the right ventricle is visualized, a flush can be pushed, and if the catheter is in the vein, you will see the flush appear in the right ventricle. Again, the right ventricle here, and the flush is pushed, and tiny micro bubbles appear.
not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasounds, hearts, lungs, my VCs, let us know how you feel about it.